I was a security guard in a closing mental asylum. As the name implies, I'm from the great state of Tennessee. I was among a group of armed guards set to protect a closing asylum. Myself and five other guards, we were at first glance happy with the post. The building was old, but in decent shape. They had plans to tear down the main building and all the separate isolation lockup buildings. All in all, there were five buildings, all separate, by the grounds and chain link fences, but connected by the underground tunnels. The dead tombs is what we called them. Guards were paired up. Some of us have never met before, but we got along okay. Our first day, we met the day crew. Our job was basically to protect the empty building from looters and vandals. Day crew were new guards and unarmed. Only night shift were armed, and they called us all the dust crew because most of us were over 40. I was just 25, but I looked older. Each crew was designated a building. We had our own security offices in each building. Every building except the admin had CCTVs and a PA system. I signed a non-disclosure agreement about the asylum, so I won't say just where it is. If you guess its location, that's 20 points to you. First night rolls up, and we all took our posts before it got dark. My building was pediatrics. Three stories high, 250 rooms, counting closets and washrooms. Place had limited power, so only one floor can be lit up at a time. Each security team was not to be alone. We go everywhere with each other. First things that started were our radios had ungodly static. Still usable, but headaches all around. I hate my building. All they did was remove the people. They left the beds, toys, and everything else undistributed. Everyone who thinks that kids' drawings and handprints are cute and fun has not been in a building that shuts down with lighting problems. Almost from the get-go, I started seeing things. On patrol, we have what's called a Deji device. It's an electric logging device to prove that a guard made his rounds. Each room had a magnetic desk mounted to the wall around the windows or back walls. We had to enter each room, touch the Deji to the desk and move on. The hallways were empty except for some scattered papers and nursing staff stations abandoned. I kept seeing shadows out of the corner of my eye. My partner did as well. We finished our rounds and headed back to the security desk, cutting the power to the floor before walking down the steps to the first floor. The elevators did not have enough power to run up and down. When we arrived back at our office, the door was wide open, and our bags and lunches were out like someone had inspected them. The door was locked, and so was the lockers with our things in them. We radioed our boss, the major, thinking he was pranking us. He said lock yourselves in, and he would be there in ten minutes. We did as we were told, putting our food away. I was not going to eat it now. We watched the cameras, the empty rooms and hallways. Hey Anon, notice the nursing station, my partner asked. No, what's up? I said looking at the monitor. The desk door was open and moving, shaking on its own. We had just been in there. The drawer was closed. We watched, holding our breath as the drawer vibrated out of the desk and onto the floor. Pencils and a large pair of scissors scattering across the floor. On another monitor, one of the doors on the second floor opened. We were spooked. The major arrived, knocking loudly on the door, scaring the living shit out of us. We didn't notice him enter on camera. He was carrying his shotgun and wanted to see the video. He told us to go up to the nurse's station and gather up every sharp item or anything that could be used as a weapon. Before leaving, he told us this. Look, you guys. We only have to do this for a few months. It's a spooky old building, and we all know that stupid shit that goes bump in the night. Be careful. We are not the first security company here. They quit for a reason. I picked you all because I'm sure you can handle it. Worst case scenario, burn the sage in the office. The building is almost 140-something years old. It's going to make a noise and shake a little. Don't let it get to you, he said before leaving us. We did as told, and went through all the drawers in the nursing stations. Fifty-something fucking scissors, and countless pens and pencils. I thought I'd open an office supply store with everything left behind. We finished our night with little else happening. When we met up with the other guards, they would not talk about what happened their first night. Before going in that night, I looked up ghosts and such. I'd never really been interested in them before this. The sage the major gave us was to drive away spirits. 
thinking I had learned enough, I went into the asylum. The major let me through the gate, checked my weapon, and gave me the usual speech of stay calm and be alert. My partner was waiting for me in the security office. He broke rule one, don't go in alone. The office door was open when I came in. That was odd, considering what happened last night. I was relieved to see him watching Netflix on his mobile hotspot. We locked ourselves in, set up the room for the night. We brought a small feast in order to enjoy the new post. We made our rounds as quickly as possible, checking the windows for damage and checking the denji. After rounds were completed, we settled into a Breaking Bad marathon. About 3.40 a.m., we checking into season two, debating who we like better, Jesse or Walt, when, hey, you guys finish your last set of rounds yet? The major called over the radio. Shit, yeah, we're on it, sir. We opened the door, running out, Deji in hand. Then, boom, the loudest booming noise you ever heard in your entire life. Shook the whole building, dust fell from the ceiling. I fell over in shock. My partner was trembling. Anon, you guys, what the fuck was that? I heard it over here. The other guards were calling over the radio. The lights started flashing on and off. The elevator doors opened and closed. Then, after a few minutes, all the guards met in the hall from around the asylum. We all searched the building. Nothing. We were very shaken. I was spent. We went home early. The major told us to get some sleep. He would watch our post. I went home as fast as my geo tracker would fucking fly. I showed up for the third night. My partner did not. He quit. I was alone tonight. The major told me not to make the rounds, just watch the screens and stay locked in the office. I brought my computer and hotspot, so I was trolling on 4chan, when around 12, I saw bright lights, flashlights, monitor 55, first floor, back of the building facing the woods, three or four people were climbing through a broken window. I called the major, only static on the radio. I followed them through the building with a CCTV. They were getting close to the double doors to the underground. If they went down there, they could get lost, or worse. We guards were not allowed in the tombs. I rushed out of the office, flashlight in hand. My footsteps thundered through the silent building. Round the corner, my radio began screeching like a banshee. The light suddenly blinded me. It's the guard. Help us. They screamed seeing me. One of them had gotten locked in the closet. I could hear him screaming and beating on the door. I used a boot knife to pry open the door lock. The kids were sat there crying on the floor. The door burst open. A young girl about 13 burst out, tears streaming down her face. She had bruises around her neck and arms. She sobbed uncontrollably as I rushed the kids into the security office. I slammed the door, locking it with a board. As soon as the door was closed, something started beating on my door, slamming against it. I drew my 45, pointing it at the door. My radio began working. The major was calling my name. I told him I caught some kids. Something attacked them and that we were barricaded in my office. All the guards again came and we all rushed out. The kids held onto my belt as we all rushed out of the building, up the stone path to the admin building. I looked back to the building. A red shadow was looking up at us as we left. Then the lights went out. We called the kids' parents. The kids kept thanking me over and over. The parents were called. I explained what happened. Most of the parents were content that the kids saw something that scared the living shit out of them, and that was punishment enough. Everyone around town knew that this place was haunted. The girl whose name I believe was Amanda, she was the one who was pulled into the closet. Her mom asked to speak to me in private. It was the close of the shift, so I indulged her. She told me she was once a nurse in that very building, that she had been attacked in the very same room by one of the kids who was once there. She told me he took his own life with a pair of scissors in the nursing station on the second floor. He slit his throat. She warned me not to go into the elevators at night. Radios do not work in them, and they will trap me inside for the night. She had it happen to her. I thanked her, and then went home. I started losing sleep. I didn't want to eat much. I was 257 pounds. Starting by the end of the week, I was 249 pounds. I had a few nights off in which the building was empty. When I returned, I had bought my own white sage, a silver cross, and garlic. I know I was freaking out. 
I was so stupid. But when I got there, the sun was still out, and I felt okay. The major came to my car with a pink box. That girl's mother came by, left you a present. I opened the box to find a legit, fresh home-baked apple pie. Holy shit, I was happy about that. Look, Anon, I'm moving you buildings. I want you in the isolation ward. I'm moving Anons to your post. They already moved your stuff in, he said, patting me on the back. Cheer up, Anon. It's not that bad. Soon they'll bulldoze this place, he said, patting me on the back. There is a new girl. I want you to train her, he said, and I gave a loud fuck in response. Go on. She's waiting in the office. I took my pie and apprehension and went to meet my new partner. Isolation was one off, if not the worst of these buildings, and the fucking creepiest by far. Solid brick with razor wire and chain-linking fence and wrought iron over all the windows. Fuck. Tonight is going to suck. Through the security gates, first door on the left, was the security check-in and the office. Anna was a brand new security guard. She just passed the armed guard test. She seemed nice enough and somewhat tough. She was black, light black, with short, well-cut dreads. She was kind of hot. We did the regular round, which were nowhere near as bad as pediatrics building. We ended up eating my apple pie and watching some DVDs she brought with her. There was not a CCTV system in this building. It seemed quite enough until 3.30. The PA system suddenly came on. A soft breathing over the PA turned into a scratchy laughing static. Anna's face. I've never seen someone look like that. The light outside the security office began flashing on and off. The door started shaking. The elevators began moving up and down at a high speed. All the doors on the upper floors opened at the same time and slammed. Anna's trembling hand had her revolver drawn. What the fuck was that, she stammered. It's alright, it's stopping. It always stopped at 3.45. The guards who took my post in pediatrics called over the radio. Hey, Anon, what's your security badge's number? I told them my number, and they asked if I could meet them in the security office. Me and Anna walked across the grounds to pediatrics. The guards locked us in the office. They had the same thing happen to them. Me and my old partner, but then they pointed toward the monitors. Camera 143. The wall at the end of the hall had my badge number painted on the wall in small handprints. A can of turned over paint was on the floor. Anon, we were just down the hall. There was no one else in this building. The major took pictures and checked the whole building. We all began to shrug these things off. It was almost normal to have them happen. Shadows moving around those on rounds. The elevators moving to empty floors. We just began to accept the job. Anna was doing a great job. Me and her started to get close. It was innocent enough at first. After a few months, me and Anna ended up transferring buildings again. A guard shift was becoming normal. I was now in the intensive care wing. Suicide watch and observation. This building was very nice. The security office was large and comfortable. The security office was built like a waiting room, plush chairs and a small fireplace, CCTVs with high definition zoom. I was looking forward to spending time in this building. Same thing with this, building low power meant only one floor lit up at a time. These rooms were like cells, clear glass and concrete beds. Nursing stations were cleaned out. All the offices were trashed, papers everywhere and smashed furniture. Be me, about a year ago, hunting hogs in the evening, sitting in a stand on the southern bottom half of the property, swamp in front and left, fenced in food plot to right, behind me is the path in, in a stand. I have my trusty Browning A-Bolt in 243 along with me that I've used since I was 10 years old. Dusk, trucks parked about a half mile away, crickets, birds, normal shit in the evening air. Start hearing Mexican music way off in the distance. Now, sound travels pretty good in the woods. I just assume it's some guys blasting music by the side of the road with a flat or something. Fuck it. It's faint and far away. Who gives a shit? Starts to get closer. Check electronic sign-in for the property. No one. Fuck it. They probably forgot to sign in, and will do it when they get to the camper that we use as a lodge. Sounds like they passed the entrance to the lodge. Starts getting closer to me. Occurs to me that no one who has access to the property 
would listen to music like that. Fuck. Text my dad if anyone is supposed to be out tonight. Text my brother to see if it's one of his friends. Nope to buff. Pick related is a different stand on the property to give you all an idea of how dense the Florida bush can be. Points to whoever finds the little deer in the photo first. I forgot to mention, the music would periodically stop and then start again, but closer. Sound starts getting closer. Eventually sounds like it's by my truck. Well, they know I'm out here now. Starts going up and down the road. Just the same song. Now sounding like it's just pacing back and forth in the area by my truck. Starts being loud enough that I can definitely make out that it's some sort of Hispanic music. I remember thinking, fuck, I'm gonna get murdered by the cartel or some shit. Music stops again. A short break. Sounds like it's starting to come down the path towards me, slowly getting louder. At this point, I am tactically shooting bricks and hoping there's no more than four guys because that's how much ammo I have left in my rifle. Try recording the sound a few times, as now it's loud enough to hear quite well. Nothing on the recordings. Finally sounds like it's going to come down the path. Hear it coming towards me. I'm ready to 360 no-scope this guy. Nothing coming down the path. Sounds like it's just out of view. Stops again. This moment was so fucking tense. I have no idea why I couldn't see what it was. Why I couldn't record the sound. I have no idea who was fucking with me, or why they would be even tracking me up this trail. Sound starts again. But this time, it's not fucking around. It's loud enough that it sounds like it's coming from the tree line around me. Fucking circling at a pretty fast speed. Try record it one last time. I'm pretty fucking spooked at this point. If it was a guy, he'd have to run circles through a swamp and hop a fence and cross a small clearing behind me where the path is, all without making noise or being seen at a record pace. If it was a drone or something, it would have to dodge all of the Florida bush, and I did not hear any noise from motors. No car could fit back there. Just me and the fucking music, playing louder than ever. It's getting dark at this point, and this bullshit has been going on for the better part of an hour, with it being close to me for the past 15 minutes. Music finally takes another stop. Scramble out of stand. Bold action with a free 9 shitty scope at the low ready. Tactical erection. Standard commando stuff. As I'm leaving, I fucking hear it one last time. Fucking following me back. Fuck off to truck and fuck off to camper, where I spend the rest of the night with my AK waiting for a sombrero skinwalker to emerge. And that was it. I mentioned to the guys who were members to the property that there could have been a poacher, and the guys who had trail cameras in the area checked, and found nothing that day. The two on the main road didn't get anything besides me coming and going. Like two weeks later, for shits and giggles, I checked my recordings. Every single one had nothing on it besides the sound of bugs, except for one in the middle, which in the background, you can hear the music. I still get noped out every time I listen to it. I've been back plenty of times since, and never had anything else like that happen. I post it, but I don't know how Vokaru works. Still no explanation, but creepy to me as fuck. I haven't seen any similar experiences, so I guess mine is unique, if a little ridiculous. Pick is a picture of the property where it opens up. Absolutely gorgeous, with open fields, interspersed with dense swamp and Florida jungle. Here is some personal Ose. This is the closest thing to paranormal that's happened to me. Feel free to AMA. Chilling alone in the middle of the night, as one does. Room is in a shoot-off from a large basement. It gets pitch black at night in the basement. Not scared of the dark, at least not at my own house. I live way up in the woods, so never worry about locked doors or windows. Keep food well secure, so bears do not want to get in. Download shitty 3D room scanner on phone. Turn on the lights full blast in my room and do a 360 scan. Stop on the doorway out into the basement. Do a double take. See pick related. Scan a doorway. Look up. Doorway completely black and empty as it should be. Look back at pick related of what appears to be a large figure wearing baggy burlap clothing and a bag over the head. Or at least that's what I see in pick related. Have a moment of not what I call dread, because I did not feel in danger. 
just the feeling of your stomach dropping when you see something that you know is really off. Scan again for good measure. Doorway is correctly pitch black this time. Search basement. Find nothing and close my door. Go to sleep, slightly perturbed. Still think about the bag man to this day on occasion. Do you think it looks like an identifiable figure? Or am I just being crazy and seeing something in the low res scan? There was supposed to be nothing there, but this fucker clearly showed up. Even if the lights were on in the basement, the background from that angle would not make those patterns. Don't remember the app, because I deleted it promptly after taking the screenshot. Also, because it took up a fuckload of space on my phone.